Yo! Hello! First What's this going music on? always get you hype, like it gets me hype. Yes, oh my god, I was gonna say, it's like kind of a bop. Where it's just like, <laughs> and the, the timing changes, and like, do, 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 and it gets slower. Yeah. You're like, Love oh, it. yes, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Welcome everyone, how's it going? Let us know in the chat, as always. Where are you coming from? Grace? Where are you coming from? Anywhere different? <laughs> I feel like never changes. I'm coming from SF this time around. Where are you at, Jack? We could just lie. I, I, I'm coming from <laughs> um, Spain today. Um, let us that know works. in the chat where you're coming from. Today, our guest for our show is coming all the way from sunny Los Angeles. Um, he is a friend of mine, someone that I met many years ago at VidCon, I believe. Well, for the first time, anyone, shout out to VidCon. Um, he <laughs> is an extraordinary photographer, video maker, um, for some of like the biggest A-listers in the world, dare I say. Um, so let's bring him on. Aaron Idelson, my friend Aaron, how's it going? Welcome, how's Aaron. Going? Hi, everyone. Hello. How are you? I'm swell. Happy to be here. <laughs> yes. We're so honored to have you here. Um, yeah, Aaron, you can probably give yourself a better intro than I can. Who are you? Tell us. I am Aaron Idelson. Um, <laughs> I think you hit the nail on the head, honestly. We okay. did me in person for the first time when I flew in and you like picked me up at the airport for VidCon. I like flew in. Wow. So you that road trip up, remember? Ugh. What a time. Yeah. VidCon like, memories. What an era. 10 years ago? Like that's no, insane. Not 2012. I think it was 20. Okay. 15. Okay, seven wow. years. Ugh. A while ago. Pain. <laughs> Pain. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, yeah, but I grew up in upstate New York. Uh, I went to school in Boston. I studied film and sociology. I started making YouTube videos when I was 13. I always kind of did photography. Uh, and then I moved to LA three years ago, like on the dot pretty much. Um, was working in TV for like two and a half years. Hated that towards the end, got to a point where that was like, this is not for me. And then I quit my job in October of last year. Wait, I remember we saw each other in LA because you were working with my friend Gus. Anyway. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, nice. Goodness. Okay. Um, yeah. And I definitely bummed out, bumped into you too. Like, I remember seeing you at like Flaming Saddles once before Flaming Saddles. <laughs> Fit the uh -huh. <laughs> it's coming back though i don't know if you heard i haven't it's... heard i haven't heard but oh, there i am so now you're now you're photographying <laughs> yes now i'm doing media production like basically when covid hit i was like here's an opportunity like the tv world slowed down a lot but i still had that mm. because they were like we're not gonna fire anybody because it's a pandemic which was really i'm very grateful for because they could have been like, we don't need you, honestly. You're not yeah. doing um, But they were like, we're going to keep you on and we're going to give you the freedom to kind of like use your time how you want. So I use that time to like really, really try to work on my freelance stuff. And I like got a lot of amazing opportunities and was able to do both at the same time. Um, mm. And then after like nine months, I was like, okay, I'm sick of this. I'm giving up opportunities now to do this job that I don't really love. Uh, and I don't really feel like I'm like growing in at all. Time to like make the leap. So I quit my job in October and it's just been honestly the craziest year since then. Wow. It's yeah, that's amazing. I didn't realize it's just been like, so you've been full-time freelancing for only a year basically. Yes. Wow. Like not Oh my gosh. Yet. It's, been, it's yeah. really like zero to hundred. Like, it's crazy. It is so that's crazy. Amazing. Looking at these photos, like, I don't, I, okay, well, let, we have to dive in about, like, how yeah. the hell you <laughs> even got here. Um, yeah. Because I feel like these are many people's, like, dreams would be to, you know, create content for such high-profile people. How did you, like, even 
begin to put yourself in front of like get these opportunities and and put yourself in front in front of like iconic like stars yeah um so when i moved out here i was working in jimmy kimmel which was like not a very glamorous job but it like sounded good. like on paper it like sounds amazing mm, but in reality like wasn't yeah. that, that wasn't that um it just wasn't for me but i am very grateful for it really like allowed me to learn how to interact with talent like this because i was like constantly around you know people in the industry and i always saw how they worked and i eventually like my second year there i was coordinating the green room so i was like doing all the talent stuff and like doing talent relations which was good so i feel like that like kind of taught me how to work around like hollywood talent and stuff um and then I mean, the, the, ironically, like the work I feel like has always been there from the YouTube videos. Like I've always been, I've always like tried to become a better photographer and videographer. I've always like loved doing that. That's like been the passion. Um, so I, and I kind of knew that eventually that was more what I wanted to do. Like I wanted to do media for talent. So while I was at Kimmel, I was like, at least while I'm not doing what I love here, like, it's something that I knew I like I could take the skill set and turn it into, you know, doing media for talent later, if that makes sense. Like it was two worlds, but I was like, I'm gonna bring these together when I leave. Um mm -hmm. so when people found out that I worked there, it was like it was good to have on my resume because they're like, you know how to act around people basically. Mm -hmm. It was like, like yeah, I, I think it gave people like a little bit of comfort. So the first client of like this caliber that I had ironically was Halsey um, because she nice. launched her makeup line last January, I think. Oh. Um, and a girl I went to college with who was working on the makeup line and they needed someone to make TikToks. So they hit me up and they were like, you know how to make TikTok, right? And I was like, actually, <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> I learn tonight how to make TikToks. So that was how it all started. That is so uh, wild. Yeah. Um, wow. Yeah, I mean, those are huge, like, things just falling in your lap. I guess yeah. it's all about just connections then, because, you know, you knew someone working with yeah. Halsey. Um, yeah, but then I, I know you got also then, like, signed to an agency, didn't you, as well, to help you find clients? I assume that's what they help you do. Is that right? Kind of. Um in theory, they do that, but honestly, <laughs> what they do more for me, like with all the work I've gotten, it's been through connections, whether it be like through a girl I went to school with, um, or like <laughs> once you're on one job, <laughs> you do well. It's just kind of like, I feel yeah. like it moves from one thing to the next. Like you'll yeah. meet one person and then they'll need someone to do something that you're doing. So they'll be like, oh my God, come do this. and. Um, so that UTA has gotten me a few jobs, but typically what they do for me more is like offer me protections. Like Jack, I think mm. you had a manager at one point for YouTube, probably, or like you had your manager for like podcasting. Podcast. Yeah. So it's like, they would kind of like fund your deals and like that opportunities and stuff for you and like offer protections. And then if there was something that pissed you off, like they would write the email so that you didn't have to do that. So it's like, they're kind of like the middleman for that, which I appreciate. And then they also have like a legal department. So they look at contracts, they like negotiate rates for me. Um, but I feel like I'm kind of a unique case because I'm signed to their digital department. So typically what they do is like brand deals for influencers, which I'm not really getting mm. brand deals. So mm. it's like a little bit different for them, but like, Ironically, yeah. I also got that because I, of who I went to college with, <laughs> because the head of <laughs> used to go to Tufts. Okay. So. I also, I'm curious when you talk about like um, working with higher profile people and how that's like a skill set. How what, what does that entail in your experience? I feel like it's uh, the the most valuable thing you can learn with working with people of like. I don't I'd hire, like that. Like, like in that industry, status. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like when to talk to people and when to like not talk to people. Because I feel like a lot, mm. of, like if you give your opinion too early or like things like, like it's knowing when they want you to 
to speak and knowing when to just kind of like be there and Chill. be ready for your job. Yeah. Um, mm, yeah. And it's, it's just like coming with ideas and, um, you know, really organizing your brain before you like when I started yeah. with Palsy, it was like I would come with a sheet of like 30 ideas because I was like, I don't know which ones you're going to like, but mm. I had a ton and be prepared. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. And are you like directing them as part of the shoot? Because I think some people think of a photographer or someone who's in media is just like they show up, take the photo. OK, done. Like edit it a little, give it to them. But you're probably like, you know, making like the whole thing happen, right? Yeah, it depends on the, the job. But for a lot of what I do, it's a lot of like producing the photos, taking the photos, directing them in them. When it's TikTok, yeah. stuff, it's, it's a lot of directing. A lot of the time mm. I also edit it all myself. So it is kind yeah. of the full, the full YouTube skill set coming into play. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it all adds up, doesn't it? The, all the paths. Yeah. <laughs> You've shot so many different events. Like, are these events coming to you and telling you to, to shoot just in general? Or um, like, how are you getting these opportunities? Yes. It kind of, yeah, it's like people I know will be like, oh, my God, I need an event photographer. And again, it's like I feel like once I did one job, people just you, you talk to people there. And as long as you mm -hmm. do a job at it, it's like they always will need like people will always need someone to do something for them. So when they when you come to mind, it's just like that is really valuable. Yeah. So like I yeah. shot one thing for someone and then it's like. I was just kind of their go-to person for a few years until I, or not a few years, I guess, a few months until I got to a point where I was like, I can't really do this anymore. I'm too busy. Wow. Yeah, yeah. you get to start saying no. Which um, is weird. <laughs> True. Which is weird. Because when you first go freelance, you have you feel like you have to say yes to literally every opportunity or you're like, I'm not going to make money. Anymore. Right. And then eventually you get to a point where you're like, I'm really overwhelmed. I need to start saying no to things. Yeah. I'm interested, so obviously we, we've been talking a little bit about how, about our past, I suppose. Um, I'm curious about your feelings towards making content like for yourself versus making it for other people. Uh, what that feels like, what you prefer, how did that happen, et cetera. Yeah. I mean, I used to love making content for myself. I loved making YouTube videos. It was really fun. I loved going out and taking photos and for instagram and stuff like it was great um and then i feel like once i started honestly once i started working at kimmel it like kind of put me in my head uh, mm. because they like didn't love that i was making content for myself because oh interesting yeah i mean it is kind of in a way like a liability if mm. i mean it is like if, if the person I have to look at it from their point of view. I'm a 23 year old kid who had just moved to LA who was like putting up content being like, I'm working at Jimmy Kimmel. And well, I knew I wasn't gonna like film stuff backstage and like leak confidential information and things that, you know what I mean? They were like, yeah. this kid, like, what's he doing? Um, hmm. But like, I obviously was like, I, I swear I'm professional. I'm not gonna break my NDA, but. Hmm. Um, Except for right now. <laughs> yeah but then like once that happened it just kind of like put me out in my head and it also made me realize i mean working with the and the, like jumping back to your question about like the skill set of working with ta like celebrities it's like mm -hmm. everyone always wants things from them like they they have very few people in their lives that are just there to like mm. work with them and like be there for them and mm. especially when I started working with like Halsey and like bigger talent more personally, I was always terrified that like if I made my own content, they would look at it and be like, you are just here trying to use my name to like make yourself famous. So it kind of put me in like yeah. this weird, weird headset of like, how do I walk this line? Do I even want to try mm. to work? What's the, what, what, what's the value of me even making my own content at this point? Like, do I really need to do it? Um, and I'm kind of back to a point where like I kind of want to, but also like that I feel like there I like moved into other ways of doing it. Like I had my podcast for a year, which was good yeah. and fun and like not really focused on me. It was kind of more like this type of format where I brought people on and we like interviewed them, uh, cool. which was nice. It was it was like a great quarantine activity. Uh, yeah, yeah. Everyone, nice. everyone got a podcast. <laughs> podcast year. When we had so much 
time. Um, yeah, but now I just like like making it for other people. I like the like financial stability. I like not looking at my face all the time. You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. Mm. I do so do you still you ever, like, I think, did you ever, when you were younger, did you want to, like, kind of be a full-time creator for, like, a channel, like, having your own channel? Yes, 100%. Okay. I, like, all I wanted when I was, like, 17 was to work on YouTube, but now I'm, like, really <laughs> very grateful that that didn't happen. Hmm. So too. that's, like, not a dream you have anymore? Absolutely not. It and I'm sure Jack yeah. feels similarly, like, looking at how much the scape has changed from when we were younger and, like who was the cream of the crop and where they are now it's like it's mm. so volatile it's like scary yeah. and yeah. Really um yeah not to yeah. be like shady I'm, but i don't no, know no 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 i hope that didn't come off as shady but like no it, no no i think it's true out. yeah i think it's yeah. true. I, I said this a million times before but i will say it again how i feel which is that like i think online creating content online if you aren't the product itself, I think it can be successful, right? Like if you're promoting something else that you're selling, a business, a show that you work on with other people, blah, 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 that has like mm -hmm. a concept. But if it's like your personality itself, that's the product that's available to be judged and that's what's making you successful or not, it's really like, it overtakes you, it's overwhelming. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And changes the way you like view yourself and your content so totally. i think that's true it's so much um, yeah. like people enjoying it and then when people kind of move on it like really screws with your self-worth and stuff i feel like mm -hmm. absolutely mm -hmm. yeah. yeah i'm interested though so obviously you're still like for you like i'm saying like it's probably more sustainable for you now because you are now not the product in terms of like personality, like your skill set is, you know, yeah. your photography. I'm interested though, you must know a lot about like Instagram and social media platforms. Um, I'm sure you've seen that Instagram is trying to possibly move away from photo content towards more video content. <laughs> um, do you think that there's like a place for photography on socials anymore? Or do you think that's like dwindling and what will happen to the photo medium? Photos will always be there because at the end of the day, like the simplest fact is it's like video is so much more work and people don't want to do that. Like mm. the same reason that people can't actually successfully become like, like anybody can be a, come a YouTuber, but like not anybody can become a YouTuber because people can't put the work in to do it. Um, yeah. Also, like, I just find it funny that it's like Instagram is trying to promote video so badly, but anytime I put up a video or a reel, it does it absolutely terribly. And my phone interesting <laughs> always still perform better like without mm. fail my videos do not do well ever. that's so interesting which is like weird because they're like do video do video and anytime i post one it's like it doesn't perform hmm. interesting i mean do i think people not... maybe also maybe people know you for photos so it's like they look out for that i'm, I'm sure there's like a niche of a bunch of you know photographers that's like that's the case right yeah, I don't know. I, I just feel like when I put up reels and stuff, people don't really see them. Hmm. I don't think they yeah. really pushed out. Or maybe people just don't interact with reels. I have no right, idea. Right, I also don't yeah. make the, like typical reels that I feel like a lot of people make, though. Like, yeah. Mm, a lot of the mm -hmm. ones I see doing really well are like of your fate, you know, like some yeah, it's like TikTok-y type content. Which yeah. I don't right. Right. Yeah, I mean, do you think that like more more of your clients will be like asking for more video content going forward? Or do you think photos are like what people want right now? Like when you're on tour with Lil Nas X, like are you also taking video content for him to post or? Kind of. It's it. He is an interesting case because like when I do hired quality video, he's like, eh. Even a lot of the time, <laughs> even a lot of the time with a like higher quality photo, like he's like, let's just take some on my iPhone, and I'm like, okay. Oh, uh, I feel like he's, he, he's very yeah, and he's like embraced the whole TikTok like low quality, just like spur of the moment thing, totally. and he's done that so well. So I think it's almost part of it, like you know, like the mindset of just like why does it need to be all fancy and like people don't totally. necessarily like it. I mean, he yeah. also is literally like a 23 year old who's like 
deep sure. on TikTok and deep on Twitter, mm, Twitter, yeah. not like Gen Z like mindset. Yeah. Of like, but I just don't need to be like crazy perfect, you know? Right. Yeah. Like, like blurry aesthetic of like I didn't try. <laughs> I like it. I guess it's terrible. Yeah. It's interesting that like yeah. I, at a certain point, now that we're saying this, I'm like, is it actually sometimes like cringe when celebrities mm. have like something that's so high quality because you like don't see themselves in it? Like, is it kind of like, as they say, is it chuggy? Like, oh. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I mean, yeah. Whatever. I think if it doesn't fit with their vibe or like how they normally conduct themselves, that's when it's like, why are you doing this? You know? Yeah, I think it is more about like staying true to yourself. Where, like I feel yeah. like Gat's page is always like my favorite mix of like she has some high quality like photo shoots where I'm like mm -hmm. you are so hot like what the hell and then the rest of it is like her with her shaved eyebrows with the like I just like mm. <laughs> it's a really good shit. so she reminds people that like yeah I'm a hot bitch but she's also like I'm fun and don't give a shit mm. and I guess that's what being real is at the end of the day you know it's like there's both it's sides both. yeah 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 huh um yeah. Cool. yeah well i feel like you must be having you know like big adventures are coming your way you're about to go on tour with little nas x for months at a time i would love okay. to just hear like what is your like favorite memory or moment or like event that you have done oh well um and yeah i would love to hear about that Anything cool? Anything cool you want to flex? <laughs> sure. Uh, my first trial run with them was the Grammys, which was ridiculous. Um, oh. So I did like it's hopefully going to come out soon. I'm waiting. I don't. I, it, it's done. The video's done. But I did like a behind the scenes documentary of like the Grammys process and then actually the day at the Grammys, which was really cool. So it's like a 35 minute. BTS documentary video, oh, which I'm wow. very proud of. So again, the YouTube skill set really coming in hard here. Um, I was about to say, I remember you used to make those videos for like Alexa Losey or whatever. It was like, this is right. This is that was Alexa Losey, but oh. basically, it's okay. That's embarrassing. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> she actually texted me, which is funny that you said that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's so that cool. was a good one. I did the Met Gala with Halsey last year, which was really cool. And then we ended up not doing the Met Gala, which was very wild. Like, wait, what does that mean? Like, we were in New York to do the Met Gala, and I was going to do content. And then there were issues with the outfit, and we were like, oh, no, this isn't going to work. So instead, we went and shot content all around New York, and then we went to dinner. <laughs> that's and I was like, honestly, skipped out on the Met Gala. Win. Sorry. Yeah, she completely skipped out on the Met Gala. That's iconic. Yeah. <laughs> she was supposed to go, but it didn't work out. And it was like, but it was like, also, I was like, thank God, because like, it was that second year of the like, same theme. And it was just like, not the, I, I felt like it was hard to, hard to win that theme. You know, I felt like all the critics were like, rah, 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 so. Mm. <clears throat> So do you pay attention to like what critics say about I, like you know, personally you know, okay. like at the end of the day if you liked what you wore and you felt good in it I think that's a lot more important than like what anybody says about you online. It's right, like truly right, about right. them feeling themselves. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And just like empowering them to like just be themselves, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Cool. And it's like you can tell when someone feels good in what they're wearing and when they walk out and they're like I hate this. Like it's the mm. energy is really different. <laughs> Uh -oh. um yeah i don't know if you want to speak about this you can definitely not oh my god my light ah! <laughs> i think i'm having brownouts here in new york where like the power is low-key uh, going off because people everyone's using the so ac yeah. yeah but not to worry not to worry um yeah i'm interested and um i don't know if you want to talk about this but like you don't have to give specifics obviously but in like what to charge as a freelance creator, I feel like is always like, yeah, that's really hard. Ambiguous. Yeah. Like, how do you determine what a? There are a lot is? of jobs. There are a lot of jobs I've had where I've set a really high number and people just don't even blink at it, and I'm like, okay, tight. Hmm. Like, really? Wow. Hard. 
Like there are certain jobs, especially when you get to the point when you're really busy, people will ask you to do things and you won't want to do it because you're so busy. So you ask, you say an astronomical <laughs> number and sometimes brands are just like, okay. But I also like, <laughs> always, I always have to remind myself when I'm charging brands that like, they are paying TikTokers like $50,000 for like one video. And I'm like, yeah. I'm doing so much more work for you mm -hmm. than that. And it's like, I think it's a better investment for them. I'm also like, obviously not going to charge them $50,000 for any, like that's insane. Um, so I like, I always tr nowadays try to keep that perspective of like, this number may seem high, but like think about what else they're spending money on and like mm -hmm. what yeah. they yeah. out of that return. But at the end of the day, it's more just about charging a number that you feel good about. Like mm -hmm. if you're doing the work and you're like, I'm dying, I hate this, I need to be charged more for it to be worth it, then charge them more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you think of it more as like a per hour thing or is it easier to do like per project? Um, it depends on what it is for sure. If it's like a bigger project, I typically prefer to do like a project fee. Yeah, um, yeah. But with like photography and stuff, if people need me to cover events, I usually do like an hourly yeah. rate or a day rate. Mm -hmm. But mm. again, it's like you just kind of kind of dive into it. And the more you do it, the more you'll figure out like what's fair, what you think your time yeah. is worth, like what you're spending on equipment, things like that. So it's just like you, you will learn it by doing it. Mm -hmm. That makes yeah. sense. If you had to give some closing advice to someone who wanted to be like a professional photographer, how, what would you tell them? How would they make it happen? Um, just be ready to work your ass off. Get your stuff done really fast. Like the faster you turn mm. things around, the more impressed people will be. Uh, it, it, I, I'm getting to a point too, where it's like, I'm obviously juggling too much. And it's like the being late on deadlines gives me a lot of anxiety because I know mm. like it's not a good thing to do with clients. Um, yeah, and then also just like be really nice and be really pleasant because at the end of the day, people will always want to work with you again if they like you. Like yeah. everything in this industry is like personal, even though it's yeah, like right, not right. like don't take things personally, but like it's all based on like personal interaction. So like if you are on set and you're pleasant and you like help move things along and like people like being around you, like you'll always get more opportunities versus mm -hmm. when you come in and you're a dick and you have an ego like they'll be like okay this was good your work's fine so you never yeah <laughs> when people like you they want you to succeed i feel like and they like recommend you for things and it's like right. opening. so yeah just be nice and love what you do <laughs> simple Great as advice. that simple as that <laughs> all right well aaron thanks so much for popping on all of aaron's links will be in the description below so you guys can go check out his work he's obviously very talented and if you want to keep up with the uh, all of Lil Nas's pictures then they're all from Aaron every single one of them <laughs> most of them <laughs> love it um, thank you for well me. of course you're good always to welcome out. here if you ever need to to rant on tour you can always come back and yeah hit me up um we're here every week, every Friday, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Come on back. Say hey. <laughs> and we'll see you guys in the next one. Later, guys. Bye.